just get a, a glimpse of Judges. It kind of depends on how our review of Joshua goes, how quickly we're able to kind of uh, take time and look at that. Uh, I'm just kind of giving you a forecast of the teaching period. We are going to slow down here and take prayer requests, but um, I do want to go over a number of slides tonight to just look at them and to try to more firmly implant the story of Joshua in your heads as a matter of review to make sure we're doing what we can to uh, establish the, the, the period of Joshua in your mind. Uh, Joshua is not a, I, I don't find that we remember Joshua really well except for uh, the Battle of Jericho, and perhaps I, and that's about it. Uh, but there's quite a few really important things that develop in Joshua, and uh, we want to take a look at those. So uh, we'll be doing that. Let's let's uh, back up just a minute and go over prayer requests. I can remember the way that name goes. Uh, your next uh, car was new baby, and I understand they're doing well, so uh, be in prayer for them. Uh, and uh, we'll continue to, to lift them up in the Lord. Um, of course, we want to pray for those that are not able to be with us uh, because of COVID. We will listen uh, and pray for the vineyards and uh, also the Kessingers, uh, asking God to, to help them during this time. Uh, as their conscience is the right move and uh, we, we pray for them during this time. We want to pray for each other. Uh, we don't, any of us really want to become uh, ill, so uh, we want to pray that the Lord would sustain us and keep us. Um, are there any other prayer requests that you're thinking of tonight besides these I've mentioned? What about Danny? Danny has, an, I spoke to, I uh, Sunday about Daniel and he's you know he just knows that he's got some sort of malady and he doesn't really know much more about it than that but she said when I talked to her about him Sunday that he was outside working on something when she left so it's not keeping him in whatever it is it's, it's not enough to, to make him uh, uh, quit his activities Rather, he just, uh, he's very cautious and he feels like if, if he feels different about his health uh, than normal, he feels like for the sake of everyone else, he wants to make sure that he doesn't uh, become a person that passes this along without meaning to. So uh, that's his concern. 
or really anything. And I, to me, I think that's that's wisdom right there. How that, do you choose? That if if you're if you're sick, uh, then you need to really be taking note of uh, what's going on around you, uh, what kind of illnesses there are in your area, and uh, if there's anything that uh, you know hurting people very much as far as a flu or something like that. You want to stay home. You don't want to pass it on to anybody. You want to play tough guy and go and be around people who might get it and then they really fall sick and have a hard time. So <clears throat> I think that he's being wise and doing what he is doing. We, Tammy and I, thank God for uh, safe travels. We, we uh, got our oil changed in our car and put the uh, first thousand miles on it inside about a day and a half. No problems. I'm not even sure we saw a deer you know, from the car anyway. Is it dry? Yeah. Is it dry? to the Lord in prayer.
Father God, we are thankful to you because you have made life as we have enjoyed it, and uh, we're just so glad that we that we have life. And That are struggling with this COVID virus and uh, some of them in, in a real bad way. We just pray for them and ask you to relieve them of the illness. And yes, uh, Rob, off of the uh, that you would be with uh, uh, all of that family, and even though there seems to be some despair with respect to uh, their their uh, eventualities here. We pray that you would instead bring hope and uh, the developments that change that uh, that feeling into uh, uh, an attitude of hope and, and gratitude. And uh, we pray for that to develop right soon. We, we uh, lament these people. You know who they are. You know where they are. What Born. We pray for her and ask you to uh, help her to grow up strong in the Lord. We pray for the uh, Velasquez Bell family. We pray for all of them. We pray for each. Al Davis, and we just pray that you would keep them coming along. We bless that, you to bless them, and thank you so much for Charles' work amongst us already, and uh, the things he's doing in the scenes, helping us out. We pray that you would uh, uh, continue to bless our fellowship, cause us to grow stronger and stronger, and in, in a, a greater attitude of love toward one another. We do pray for. Uh, those that cannot be with us uh, because of their concern regarding health, uh, we pray for the vineyard, and we pray especially for Ashley that he would help her to get well from the variety of things that she faces right now. We pray that doctors will have wisdom and insight and uh, that she will have patience and uh, good hope, certainty, a, a feeling of, of security as she We, their church family, love them and care for them. Father, we thank you for the Vacation Bible School we enjoyed last week. What a wonderful time. We pray that you would continue to bless uh, people through particularly what we call the conquest of Canaan. Of course, Joshua has a history that extends back beyond the conquest. Moses uh, kind of became a Moses right-hand man guy while Moses was alive. And uh, we we uh, have here the land of Gilead is one way that people refer to it. Others. Call it uh, the land beyond the Jordan, uh, and this one.
had stolen uh, silver and uh, some clothing. I'm not sure if there's anything else there that he had stolen, but he had stolen this from Jericho. Uh, he was supposed to uh, give all of this to the Lord, and he did not. He kept it kept for himself and hid it in his tent. Then, as you recall, um, he is uh, basically ferreted out of the people of Israel, uh, Joshua uh, brings the uh, tribes in front of him, and then one tribe is chosen, and then he brings the men of the tribe and the families before him, and eventually it comes down to Achan. Uh, Achan and all of his family are stunned, and uh, the remains of their uh, belongings and everything uh, that they are kind of in under that whole pile is also burned. But finally, they go capture I. Why? What's this? Know it now. Uh, tell me about this story. You remember what this is about? People came and pretended they had come a long way. All right, people came and pretended they had come a long way and they were really just kind of over the hill. Uh, what was their, what was the name of that tribe? Gibeonites, G-I-B-E-O-N, Gibeon, Gibeonites. And so they, they came in acting as if they were, uh, had come a long way and uh, Joshua and the men listened to them and they have mercy on them and promised to take care of them and uh, the upshot of it is that lo and behold, once they've made this promise to him, without asking the Lord, they made this promise, and uh, um, they find out that, uh, in fact, the people are from just over the hill. What happens to the Gibeonites? They become servants. Okay. The Gibeonites become servants of the Lord, uh, as servants of the people of the Lord. What kinds of things do they have to do? Carry water and chop wood. Yeah, bring wood. So there are wood gatherers and, and uh, water toters, I guess you might say. Uh, then we read about how five kings did what? What was the. They gathered together to try to get the Gibeon. Yeah, they found out that Gibeon had made this uh, treaty and that upset them. And they said, well, my goodness sake. 
we're going to take them down then if that's the way they're going to treat uh, us and the people that we're around when we have this threat coming into our our area we're just going to go uh, take them down as a people and make an example of them uh, and so those five kings uh, gathered together in council and began their war against the Gibeonite people. Well, the Gibeonite people uh, do what about that? They appeal to Joshua, don't they? They basically, we're one of you now. You've got to help take care of us. Well, the Lord uses this, and I've, I've ex expressed and, and uh, stressed this, that I believe the Lord used this to more quickly conquer the land because yes they made a mistake with Gibeon that's true The fact that uh, the defeating goes on and God helps in two ways. What were those two ways that God helped? Against Israel, and here in this slide, you can begin to see some of the uh, city areas that they come from, and uh, then this is more broadly they came from these areas, uh, and we're going to fight against the Israelite people. Uh, I've, I've kind of put it together like this now that that the. Uh, uh, was going on and really kind of and uh, that, that, that they defeated those that new outfit that came from up in this area uh, they then came and took on the actual where the guy they met they met in battle here at I think it's called the Springs of Merom in the scripture if I'm not mistaken and, and uh, they were defeated that big uh, uh, lots of, of folk from the northern areas were defeated and uh, Joshua's army actually pushed them back to these areas these are made mention of so they, they, they met in battle right here in this area and when they defeated them then they ran out and pushed them out clear out to this, these extremities so quite an awful lot further north even than the Sea of Galilee. Usually when we talk about the ministry of Jesus, uh, we pretty much stop right up here at the north end of, of Galilee. That's all that you ever talk about. That's where Capernaum is. And then pretty much his whole ministry takes place southward. But uh, in this uh, telling of the story in Joshua, we find that Joshua's forces have pushed people well past the Sea of Galilee and uh, uh, have them uh, way up in those areas. Um, then they come back and sort of mop up here at Hazor. And to kind of make sure you understand, this is the Sea of Galilee here, and this is another lake uh, up in this, this area right here. Hazor is uh, built not far from it. And uh, they defeat Hazor uh, thoroughly and, and moderation. Um, then the tell us that they continue to do a kind of a mopping up operation. Uh, Uh, 
the the uh, the Anakim and uh, Entirely all of them are defeated. By the end of uh, our kind of talk about conquest, uh, so that's, that's the way they, that looks. And then the 12 tribes are mentioned. Uh, we, we went over them last week. How the 12 tribes were split up and they got, each one of them has a description of their area and that they cities of refuge, that there's uh, three on the, uh, uh, across the Jordan. Something of that nature, and somebody was trying to take vengeance on you until your trouble, your case would be tried. You could flee to one of these cities and be kept uh, safe in those cities until your case could come to trial. Uh, in addition, uh, a recounting in Joshua is given of the uh, cities for the least quite a number of them. So uh, they are here placed upon this map. All those orange circles. Uh, are, are cities where uh, the Levites went to live and the Levites uh, were not given uh, areas to uh, dominate rather uh, they were because their ministry was with the with the tabernacle uh, they are given uh, cities and then a certain area around each city is given to the Levites for their uh, food sources and also uh, for them to develop as they would. So that's where we left them. Let's let's move ahead now. 22. We're going to talk about these uh, passages here in Joshua 22, 23, and 24. To the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan. So let's stop right there and just ask, what is this about? His ways and hold fast to a lot in the Old Testament and it's worth our note. We we tend to not make much of it. You know, uh, I do because I'm kind of a I'm kind of a nut that way. I like to go along the Mississippi River, for instance, and I look at the Mississippi River and I go, oh, you could get across here. Where's the next place, north or south, you could actually get across? 
And see, even to this day, uh, in, a, in a case of a river like the, the Mississippi, getting across it is a big deal. And even getting across some of our smaller rivers and creeks and so forth is often a question. It's, it's not necessarily that simple. To build a bridge is a big deal. Now, I don't think they even build bridges. So, for them to be on one side of the Jordan and the other people to be on the other side of the Jordan, that's a big deal. And it's all the way from the Dead Sea, uh, all the way up to the Sea of Galilee, something like 55 miles or so uh, in between. And all of that area is not really, you don't easily or sort of simply cross over. Uh, tell me how it was done in the Old West. Into a big body of water, had to get across. Yeah, there you go, built ferries. The Indians before them, you know, they built across in a canoe or something, you know. A lot of people came along, they didn't like going across piecemeal like that, so, uh, you know, they stretched a rope across, and then they tied their, their big, wide raft that they could get across there and keep it attached to that rope all the way across, and uh, they, they would put on a wagon. Under these little towns, these little birds called Sultos Ferry, Sultos Ferry, everywhere there's Sultos Ferry, little towns. And uh, so, to the Feast of Booze things like that, so he's, he's quite aware when he sends them away that he, he needs to stress to them, look, stay after the Lord, we want to see you again. You know, so it, it's an interesting uh, thing to kind of reflect on, I believe. Now, uh, verse 7, Now to the one half tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given the possession in Bashan, but to the other half, Joshua gave a possession among their brothers, westward beyond the Jordan. Now you may remember this, that we kind of we talk about the half-tribe of Manasseh. Why is it the half-tribe of Manasseh? Let's go there. Okay. It's actually, in a certain sense, it's a quarter tribe on the east and a quarter tribe on the west. Why would I say that? Well, because they were half of Joseph. There you go. Joseph becomes, in the inheritance picture, Joseph becomes two tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. So uh, Manasseh is really the half-tribe, as it were. Anyway, Ephraim and Manasseh are sort of half-tribes. So that's what we keep in mind when you think about how, uh, how you get, for instance, 12 pieces of real estate uh, when you had 12 tribes, and one of them doesn't get any real estate. See? Remember, Levi doesn't get any. So you still got to come back up to 12. The way that rather than getting one, gets two under Ephraim and Manasseh. And then in this case, he's talking about uh, where the uh, land is. To the one half tribe, Manasseh, uh, Moses. Are over there in Gilead. So when God sent them away to their tents, he blessed them. Verse 8 said to them, Return to your tents with very great riches, with very much livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, iron, and with very many clothes. Divide language 
believe that gets the developing about uh, the land of Israel and the land of Gilead almost. Uh, so there you go. Um, they returned home and departed from the sons of Israel. What? They're sons of Israel too, are they not? Yes, they are. The sons of Israel are which is in the land of Israel, not Israel, but Gilead, to the land of their possession, which they have possessed according to the command of the Lord. Why is it alarming that they built an altar? Heard it said, Behold, remember who the sons of Israel are? They're all on the left side of the Jordan. Sons of Israel heard it said, The whole congregation of the sons of Israel gathered themselves at Shiloh to go up against them in war. Obviously, the altar had gotten their attention. <laughs> so, uh, something about that altar was wrong. Then the sons of Israel sent to the sons of Reuben and the, to the sons of Gad and to the half tribe of Manasseh into the land of Gilead. Uh, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest. So, uh, they weren't ready to go to war just yet. They said, hey, Mr. High Priest. How did God go about promising them? I mean, he said, he said, you go, he said, you, you go up through, up and down through the land. And all the land that you go up and down through, that's what you get. But pretty much you don't read about Abraham going over to the west side of the Jordan. Now, I'm not going to try and say that, that God did not intend I don't believe that. I honestly, honestly believe that rather God did intend that the, the, the two and a half tribes would have that west side. East side, sorry. The east side of the Jordan. Uh, I'm, I'm of that opinion, that that's what was going on. Uh, but one can see Uh, anyway, uh, one can see 
kind of how it might develop if you think about how it got promised. Fair enough? Okay. I don't think you're wrong. I don't think Uh, men who were of the Israelite family might sort of normally have come to that sense about things. Yeah. Uh, but to, to make the conclusion then, then that that's the way it was supposed to be, I can't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. In fact, if I did that, I'd end up in, in uh, kind of trouble with uh, the current situation over in <laughs> New Jerusalem and in the in Israel because they're they're having trouble uh, right now uh, with uh, things in that in that area. Okay, and with him ten chiefs, one chief for each father's household from each of the tribes of Israel. All went over uh, to visit with the uh, Gilead. He will be angry with the whole. Basically, that comes to these three tribes on the. But guys. Recall they had begun to get into uh, some kind of marriages with the people around them. Uh, get into too much guesswork and detail, but it apparently. Was Are being now, uh, what's going on with you anyway? So this altar is still, uh, I, I see kind of puzzled looks on faces. Why is having an altar a problem? It remains a problem, not just here, but later when uh, King Solomon's son uh, Rehoboam uh, ends up getting the the nation split into two between him and Jeroboam. Jeroboam goes up and builds an altar up north. What well, you can offer a sacrifice to the Lord. One tabernacle. You can If we build an altar here, uh, and we're going to we're going to be all worshiping the Lord on this altar, you have broken with our understanding of how you do sacrifice in the people of Israel. So that's what's going on with this altar. This is what got them upset. Like that, then it's a good way to get yourself 
You've making a break from the law. You're making a break from the revealed way of worship. And this is something I think you've got to take seriously even in this day. Uh, that, that you don't uh, have other ways of worship. So if I worship God in my own way. When somebody says that, I'm worried about it. Because if there's a revealed way to do something, well, I guess probably we ought to make sure we fall into that niche or that way of doing things rather than letting ourselves kind of be attracted to something that seems spiritual. This happened a lot. I've got, got, oh, I've got the play right here. A lot actually on the uh, American frontier. Uh, you can read about In my opinion, this is part of, and please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say, but in, in my opinion, appeared to the to the American Indian tribe. And the Bible don't say anything about that. Uh, so, and you're accepting it upon the words of a, of a fellow named Joseph Smith who has gone aside into a little anyway. There's a lot that you can look into. The reason I want you to take me like I, I just really am banging away at the Mormons because Think I'm not too sure, but what we need to be a little more open to the Mormon who loves his Bible and loves his Jesus and understands him as the Son of God commits the same uh, confession of faith that you. of your worship to, to, to let other things fit and become part of your worship process, part of your understanding of the world. Careful about that. Uh, so that's what's going on. They had accepted this other altar. They, they thought that they had accepted another altar, but watch, because that's not what really happened. If, however, the land of your possession is unclean, in other words, if it's not, you don't like this, guys, you don't like it over here on the east side of the Jordan, if, however, the land of your possession is unclean, then cross into the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle stands and take possession among us. In other words, they're beginning to think that. Perhaps, you know, God's, God's land is over. Achan, the son of Zerah, act unfaithfully in the things under the ban. We've already covered this. And wrath felt fall on all the congregation of Israel. The mighty one, God, in other words, they start their come their reply to their western brothers, these eastern Gad, Reuben, and half-tribe of Manasseh, start by worshiping God. Mighty one, God, the Lord, 
the mighty one God the Lord. He knows that may Israel itself knows if it was in rebellion or if an unfaithful act against the Lord, do not save us this day. In other words, kill us all. If we have built us an altar to turn away from following the Lord or if to offer a burnt offering or grain offering, You, your sons of Reuben and your sons may take make our sons stop fearing the Lord. Therefore, we said, Let us build an altar not for burnt offering, rather, it shall be a witness between us and you and between our generations after us that we are to perform the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our offerings. So that your sons will not say to our sons in time to come, you have no portion in the Lord. Okay? Uh, that's, that's what they So it's like just as you're crossing someplace on New this altar. Anybody that's come up through there that was Israelite uh, of the western side would look at So they built this altar. That's their rationale for it. Um, Therefore, we said it shall come about if they say to us this in the generations in time to come, then we shall say, See the copy of the altar of the Lord which our fathers built, uh, altar of the Lord which our fathers built, made not for burnt offering or for sacrifice, rather, it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord and turn away from him. The Lord is day by building an altar for burnt offering, for grain offering, or for the altar. Has heads of the families of Israel who, who were with him. And as he spoke, it pleased to them. And Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the uh, priest, said to the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad, the sons of Manasseh. Today we know that the Lord is in our midst because you have not committed this unfaithful act against the Lord. Now you have delivered the sons of Israel from the hand of the Lord. Then Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest of the turned from the sons of Reuben and from the sons of Gad, from the land of Gilead to the land of Canaan, to the sons of Israel, and brought back word to them. The Lord word pleased the sons of Israel, and the sons of Israel blessed God. They did not speak of going. That's what it is, a memorial. Don't tell anybody when
Guys, really need to make up your minds that you're going to serve the Lord.